The 12 Lows are the latest shoes from the Jordan brand to get the golf treatment. And interestingly, I think this one divides the most opinion so far. When I've posted pictures of these, my US audience have gone crazy for these shoes and my UK audience, not so much. I think this is gonna be a case of if you love the history of this shoe and you love what it stands for, you're gonna be all over these. Compared to if you're just looking at these purely on the aesthetics of the shoe, then the jury might be a little bit out on them. I did manage to pick up a pair of the retro sneakers that dropped a couple of weeks before the golf shoes. And you can see here that when these are called a low golf shoes, compared to the sneakers there, well, they definitely are significantly lower. That being said, as a pair of golf shoes, these are still pretty high up on your ankle. They're pretty chonky shoes. If you're lucky enough to pick up a pair of these, they might go straight into your rotation, or you might just wanna keep them to look pretty. It's a funny thing, but that is happening more and more with golf shoes these days. They're becoming more like collector's items compared to things that you get dirty out on the golf course. In terms of the actual look of the shoe, they're pretty iconic and unique to say the least. Certainly when you compare them to the Jordan 5 golf shoes that I've got right here, and also the Jordan 4s, you can see that the 12s have certainly got a much more kind of modern, futuristic look, even though these were launched 96, 97. That's a long, long time ago. Between the two, I'm a bigger fan of the Jordan 4s. I prefer this seriously retro, old school look when I'm rocking my trainers. These look a little bit more athletic. They look more like modern day basketball shoes. Don't forget, we've also got the brand new Jordan 1s as well, which I managed to cop in the Wolf Greys. So if you're looking for something a little bit more casual out on the course, then these might be the ones that you wanna go for. And actually, in terms of the actual stock, I've got a feeling that these are gonna be seriously limited, whereas the Jordan 1s do seem to be getting restocks in the UK and the US. You just gotta be patient and hopefully get lucky. Anyway, back to the 12s. So you can see here that these are a full-blown spiked golf shoe. You've got the five spikes in the front, and then you've got the two at the heel of the shoe as well. So in terms of actual grip and traction out on the golf course, then you're gonna get a decent amount. I also like the little colorway element that you do get in the middle of the outsole there. Again, that's just a nice touch and blends in nicely with the little gold tabs up on the top of the shoe there, which is what give these shoes that taxi nickname. Taking a real close look, you actually have a couple of contrasting bits of texture on the shoe as well. First of all, starting with the outsole, you can see here that you've got a very, very smooth midsole foam. And then you've got this more textured midsole foam as well, which blends more with this leather piece there, which runs up along the side of the shoe and kind of covers along the front of the toe box. And you've also then got this stitched part on the outside as well as the inside of the shoe, which gives this ripple effect going along from the front right to the rear of the shoe. And again, that's mimicked in the white midsole foam at the back there. You've also got Jumpman written on the side there in this little rubber element. On the back of the shoe, you've got the signature 23 at the bottom, as well as this cool little golf logo tab on the back, which on the trainer version, you actually have just Jordan instead. So again, that's a nice touch just for these golf shoes. Looking at the front of the shoes, you've got the Jumpman on the tongue there, and then you've got two spelled out and the number three along the tongue. Although it's pretty tricky to kind of arrange the laces so you can see it all clearly at the same time. Got an okay amount of padding on the side of these shoes. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the most padding I've ever felt in a pair of Jordan golf shoes. Actually comparing it to the fives, Fives pad in there is a lot softer and a lot wider as an opening. Now where the Jordan 12s have a massive advantage compared to some of these older retros like the Jordan 4 here is that these ones have got a full length air zoom pocket. And when I put them on, these are extremely soft and comfortable underfoot. I was genuinely surprised. With some of the older Jordan retros that have been turned into golf shoes, they can be a little bit firm underfoot, certainly compared to modern foams and things like that. These are seriously, seriously comfortable. So if you are out walking on the golf course, I tell you what, your feet are gonna absolutely love these because they are nice and soft and give you that real kind of cushioned, cloud-like feeling. Does that mean that these are gonna be the best golf shoes for performance out on the golf course? Well, not really, because they've been designed for basketball, not for golf. So yes, they have got that spiked outsole on the bottom, which is gonna give you a good amount of grip and traction. But in terms of performance on the golf course, it's not only about the grip. You need to have enough stability in the shoe as well, and you need it to be kind of flexible in the right places. With these, I think they're gonna be comfortable enough to walk in, However, if you're not used to having a high kind of ankle on your golf shoe, then that might take quite a bit of getting used to and might be a little bit uncomfortable, certainly if you're like me in the UK and don't really wear basketball shoes for regular wear. In the UK, we're much more used to wearing running shoes, so these do feel quite a bit different. Now you are gonna get a fairly decent amount of support right up the foot because you need a lot of support in a basketball shoe. 
But the whole point of basketball is to give you that support when you're making fast turns and cuts and things like that so you don't roll your ankle. In golf, it's a little bit different. The whole point is that you're trying to put as much force through the floor and kind of allow your foot to rotate in the right way during your golf swing. I haven't used them out on the course yet, but I wouldn't expect absolute lead in performance, but really, you're probably not buying them for that. You're probably buying them because they're a pair of 12 lows. At 200 pounds, they're not exactly cheap. They're pretty expensive, to be fair, for a pair of golf shoes. Really, again, it all comes down to the fact whether you want to get these shoes. I don't really think the price is necessarily gonna put you off. If you're looking for a pair of premium spiked golf shoes that are based on the Jordan 12s, then you're gonna have to pay it. It's as simple as that because this is it. This is all you're gonna get. Hopefully they might release some other colorways in the future because they've done that quite a lot with the other Jordan Retro Golf shoes. Of course, I have included my affiliate links down in the description below. So if you are trying to grab a pair, then why not check out those links? Hopefully you'll be able to get a pair when they come back in stock, if they come back in stock, fingers crossed. If you enjoyed getting a closer look at the Jordan 12 Golf shoes, then make sure you hit that like button so more people get to see this video. And if you're curious, why not check out my close-up look of the Jordan 1 Low Golf shoes, which I've included the video right here.